Well, what I was trying to say before my memory was filling up there was I ended up with 1059 on my gravity, which is 84% efficiency, and I will definitely take that. I don't know if that little bit of sparge I was doing did about two gallons of uh, sparging through pulling out the the ward out of the bottom of the spigot, putting it back up in the top, which we've seen that earlier in the video. Um, we ended up with five gallons in this one bucket, just over a teeny, teeny bit. We'll just call it four and a half anyway. In the other bucket, so nine and a half. Um, but we had two, four, six, I want to say. over six ounces of hops which I guess that's not a lot in a 10 gallon I'm used to doing five gallon batches um, so six gallons of hops which absorbed some we had 21 22 pounds of grain um, so nine and a half normally I try to go about five I try to go right up to this edge right here which is about five almost five and a half gallons in each pail that way I can you know leave a little you know leave the yeast cake in the bottom and the trub and whatnot and crap down in there after it's fermented and uh, come up with you know still five gallons in the keg but we'll, we'll tinker with it we'll tweak it here and there that we come up with whatever we come up with and we'll pitch uh, sample USO5 in this one you probably tell that's a little cloudier in that one because it sucked the last of those hops out. But that'll clear up. It'll settle down. So I'm happy. I'm happy with my first brew day. I was thinking I was only going to come up with about eight gallons. And I uh, ended up with a teeny bit over nine and a half. So not bad. Do some adjustments. Uh, you know, maybe I was thinking about buying one of those. Um, hang on a minute. about buying one of those one gallon like tea kettle things that plug into the wall and it'll boil some water or whatever but I thought about getting one of those and just plugging it into the side somewhere and just you know having some heat up some water in that thing and then just sparge that over the top and that should you know make up the difference I mean obviously if we got nine and a half that would be ten and a half I'd be real happy with that just adding a gallon and that's a regular pale ale I think it's about 35 uh, IBUs 35, 36 IBUs on this one, so I'd be real happy. That'd be a good house, house pail, you know, something to keep around. Um, you're not a lot more beer with, with the hops, but I like hops, um, so cheers. We got them to bed. We haven't put the uh, hair locks on them yet. We got them in here. I got a mark with the 1056 and then the uh, USO5. Normally it takes mine anywhere from 18 hours or so to start kicking with the temperature control. As you can see, we got some wine bottles in here, some little 375 milliliters, I think. It's about a half a bottle of wine perfect for my wife. It's about two glasses. About all she ever drinks if she drinks some and after dinner or whatnot. I got some uh, hard cider going in there um, with the brown sugar and whatnot. I bought some uh, London cider yeast that I'm trying out this time. This has been going the 10th. Today's the 17th. I don't know if you see that or not, but she's still percolating. And it smells of sulfur, obviously, when I open this thing up. All in all, a good brew day. I'm going to clean now. I don't know if I'll do any more videoing. It's pretty monkey. So, we'll see how we end up on the cleaning. I'm going to go do a, uh, another look-see on, uh, on the manual on how to clean this thing out.
I'm sure I'll want to rinse and dump all that crap out before I fill it and heat it up to clean it. I notice after I just dumped this out, and I did rinse a little bit of water in there, so let's just say I threw a half a gallon in there, but I got a gallon and a half left with the hop sludge. So I could have got that last gallon out of there, which I don't understand why I can't, because you can see how, how close that dip tube comes to the bottom. I mean, obviously all it did was it just clogged it up, lost the siphon, and that was it. Because my hose was draining below uh, into the bucket below that drain point, below that lowest point down there. So my whirlpool didn't work so good um, with that extra element right there in the middle. I think the 20 liter, 10 gallon version, 5 gallon version, I'm sorry, um, just has the elements around the outside edge and not on the inside. So maybe that comes into play or something. But I whirlpooled it and let it set for at least 15 minutes. So now I'm going to just. Uh, rinse it one more time and then I'm going to fill it up above the elements like the instructions say run it up turn the heat on get it to a certain temp I think it was 35 degrees Celsius and um, and then unplug it and do my cleaning All right, just look at instructions let it towel down here turn the unit over unhook the pump all you got to do is twist this part not the blue part or anything comes right off you can see the grain that are that are up in there now it, somehow I'm supposed to clean this out without getting any any water on these parts over here as you can see <laughs> so I unscrewed this but I didn't pull this hose out of here because I was a little leery of that so uh, I'll take a squirt bottle or something and see what I can do to clean that out cleaning I got the pumps running got it heated up to 50 degrees Celsius which is about a hundred and maybe 22 Fahrenheit Too. This drip pipe here I've got below where the bottom of this dip tube would be, so this should drain everything out of it that's in there that it can get. Kind of let me know. I'm pretty sure I got clogged up on my hops a while ago when I had another gallon left. And about that level right there where it's at now, there's where it's hitting that top of the hole where the dip tube starts. There should be about three gallons left. I'm going to pull the bucket. Alright, we're getting down on the nitty gritty here. Measuring good. See how much we 
have it left over. We're done. 